Welcome to the Human Nature Channel. I'm your host, Alex Tamsula, also known as Daddy Baby on Twitter. And what am I doing here? Well, it's Tuesday night once again here in my dad's brightly lit farm garage. After I set up my camera and my tripod in front of me, but before I start shooting any video, I set up the lights. I've got a light down and to my right. It's a light bulb in a socket. It's got a reflector around it. The socket is attached to this spring squeeze clamp, which attaches to the edge of a shelf. It lights the location of my cigarettes in case I have to grab them in a hurry. I got a light behind me, so I get this funky ponytail effect. I have a light off to my right because I understand the three to one lighting ratio of the professional. Light over here, dark over here, light above your head, nothing to it. But there's more to it than that. When dad goes down to the house in the evening and leaves me to my own devices, I turn on every light in here. You see that light beside the pipe? I'll even turn on the light strapped to my head. You might even say I brighten the place up. My invisible partner moved away, and now I don't see him anymore. But we stay in touch. In fact, every Monday night at 10.30 in my bedroom, I'm on the phone with him for an hour. Now, the reason I'm in my bedroom is because sometimes there is a transmission problem, and he breaks up. Now, he says that he hears me all the time clearly. But with him, you know, sometimes he'll say a sentence and I hear every other word. And I ask him, could you please repeat that? And then I hear every word I missed the first time. So I put it all together and it's still gibberish, but I tried so I don't feel so bad when I say, I couldn't agree with you more. So... We got this breakup problem and I've experimented with the best place in the apartment in which to get good reception and I've walked all over the living room and I've gone into the kitchen and I looked at the bathroom and said last resort. But fortunately, I seem to get the best reception in my bedroom. I will hear him for at least 15-20 minutes at a time before there's any problem. So. We're talking on Monday night, and he said, oh, by the way, have you been hearing me clearly? Has there been any problems? And I says, you know, about five minutes ago, you started breaking up a little bit. So I got on my stomach, and I put my head under the radiator. And suddenly, it's like you're right there next to me. You're coming through clear as a bell. I think we found the sweet spot. And he's there, yay! He's a great guy to bounce ideas off of. And we discuss my plans for the new and improved Human Nature channel. And I said to him, you know, I used to make really long videos. Ah, uh, I've made a video, I think it's close to 45 minutes long. I know I've made some that are a half hour long. I'm like, no more. I don't see the point. I said, here's my new way of doing things. As soon as I have 3.33 minutes worth of material, I'm going to put it on video. And as soon as I have another 3.33 minutes of material, I'll put that on video. And I'll keep it up until I have 10 minutes worth of material on video. And then I'll upload it to YouTube and the way we'll go. I like this, you know, like chunky approach because then I get into this rhythm of producing material. It's like 
boom, here it goes, here it goes, always, always ready for the next thing. Not only that, I'm telling them, I've gotten on three other video hosting platforms. Uh, well, I've been on BitChute, okay, I've been on BitChute for like a year and a half, I already had two videos there, but I got on Library, which at this point I find a complete enigma, uh, so I have to spend time figuring that out. And then I got on Rumble, which was kind of interesting because it seems very YouTube friendly. It's like, do you want us to connect you with all things YouTube? And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I got those three. Then there are the paywall sites, uh, Patreon and Subscribestar. Now, I've been on Patreon since I got on YouTube back in um, 17, 2017. Uh, it was with my other YouTube channel, the, the movie review channel, Movie That's So Groovy with Alex. So I set up the Patreon, but I couldn't quite wrap my head around how to make paywall work for me. Um, I mean, I'm putting stuff up on YouTube for free. Well, there's no sense putting that behind the paywall. So that they want you to do exclusive or, you know, put the video there first and then two months later on YouTube. And then there's the whole Patreon, patron thing, patron group. I got an email from Patreon saying, if you want patrons, here's what you do. Send out 10 emails and or text messages to family and friends and invite them in to be your patrons. And I'm like, this is Amway. I can maybe see in the future finding a way to make Patreon work, but right now the setup is just not for me. However, Subscribestar, which is also paywall, fits more nicely into my plan. Now, Subscribestar is a trip, okay? Because I hear that it's out of Russia. It's, it's Russians who put together Subscribestar. And it's easy to use. You know, you just slap in the uh, URL for your YouTube video and it's, there it is. But they've got this funny way of saying how you should build an audience. It's like... Do not put up more than two videos a week. You do not want to overwhelm your audience. And I'm like, you know, that's like a week's worth of work is only Monday and Tuesday. I, I don't understand that attitude unless it's don't work so hard. You make us look bad. Okay, if that's how it is, I'll play by your rules. But their paywall is kind of nifty. Uh, you put your video behind the $5 paywall. You want to see video? Pay $5. Okay. And I'm thinking about doing more videos where I sing, and I'm going to put them on Subscribestar behind the $5 paywall. Um, you can throw money at me like I'm Edith Piaf. Alex, we need a plan on how to make a plan. I'll get right on it. Yes, I call this operation. I'm not killing myself doing this stuff. Next, we're going to talk about SI Hayakawa. Hayakawa, Hayakawa, Hayakawa. So the last bit of video came in at just under nine minutes. So much for the 3.33 minute plan. But I do want to talk about the great S.I. Hayakawa, professor of English, who wrote a classic on semantics called Language in Thought and Action. Now, many years ago in the 70s when I was in college and getting a degree in English literature, I'd hear about this book. It came highly recommended some version of it has existed since 1938, so it's, it's gone through like six editions, or at least this is the sixth edition here. I'd always said to myself, oh, one of these days I'll get around reading it, yeah, but it fell through the cracks for the longest time. Until last year, and 
not just the election, but the news media's coverage of the election made me finally want to pick up my copy and read it. And I'm glad I did. This comes highly recommended. It's only 180 pages long. The writing is a model of clarity. A 15-year-old could wrap his head around what all SI is saying. But the best thing about the book for me is your ability to spot propaganda, understanding how propaganda is made, figuring out what propaganda is up to is greatly improved after reading this book. So in upcoming videos, we're going to be taking SI a chapter at a time and you know, showing the core idea. There's even practical applications for this, which I'll talk about later. Have a good one.